Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor. And today we've got a ride and review comparison on two affordable, I'm not gonna go as far as to say beginner, but uh, approachable lightweight adventure touring bikes. On the left, we've got the 2023 Honda CRF 300L Rally. And then over on the right, the BMW G310GS. Both of them come in just a hair under $7,000 off. Obviously, you're gonna be paying a little bit more than that once you factor in uh, tax title fees, dealers, all that sort of business. But what we've got to go off of, these are very similarly priced if you get them both with ABS. Now this is a non-ABS model. This one is with ABS, it's the only way that the GS comes. But uh, both bikes that you really should be able to ride I'm gonna go as far as to say anywhere. They can excel on-road, they can excel off-road. You can sort of use them in as many different situations as you could for about a less than $10,000 bike. So today we're gonna to head out and we're gonna do a little bit of street riding. We're gonna be doing a little bit of trail riding and talk about which one makes more sense for a beginner, which one makes sense for more of an intermediate rider and why you might choose either. Okay, the Honda has disappeared and we're heading out on the BMW first. Now, it might be weird to you that a BMW is uh, equivalently priced to a Honda. And yeah, I mean, this bike, it's not like it's manufactured in Germany. It's got a lot of development and production over in Asia. But at the end of the day, you're still dealing with a product that BMW is willing to put their badge on. So we've got things like adjustable handlebars, and good headlights, ABS standard, a really cool paint package here with this Rally Edition. And uh, I gotta say, I think it's the more handsome of the two bikes. A little bit more symmetrical and a little bit more, looks like more of a grown-up sort of bike. Although it doesn't quite feel that way. Some of the, the switch gear is particularly plastic. And then you've got the engine as well. That is my least favorite thing about the 310 both the gs and the r is this motor it is a little bit larger and a little bit more powerful than the honda but you add the extra weight that this bike has this one about 380 pounds and the honda about 330 and they don't feel this doesn't like feel any crazy more powerful when you're riding it around than the honda this motor is one of the most characterless engines that i've ever ridden on a motorcycle I've ridden my buddy John's G310R, and I didn't care for it, and then my BMW rep here said, hey, you should try out the uh, the 310GS, you know, it's, it's kind of a fun bike, and I, I wasn't really that interested in doing it, but then I looked up and saw that it's actually a pretty popular bike in terms of search volume interest, so I said, all right, well, you know, I'll give it a shot, maybe, uh, maybe with a little bit more time I'll come to appreciate it more. And the bike as a whole, the answer to that is yes, I have come to appreciate it a good bit. But the engine, no. It, it just sings along with no sort of useful or exciting note or noise. And I guess you do feel the extra power compared to the Honda. It, it does feel more sprightly. But it, it doesn't inspire fun. <laughs> And the Honda has a little bit more of a low-end gruntiness that feels more characteristic to the bike. And this bike just feels like it's making noise for the sake of making noise, and eventually you do get going forward at some point. The seating position is also very different on this bike. It's much lower than the Honda, and that is the most important thing to me as uh, its merits as a beginner bike, is it's a lower uh, bike in general, and then you... Not only can you put your feet down more confidently, but it means that you can rock the bike back and forth and you can turn the bike and maneuver it, especially in off-road sort of situations, easier than you can the Honda. You're gonna hear me coming back to this more and more throughout this video, but I don't think the Honda is a particularly great inter, uh, entry-level bike. I really don't, I think it's more of an intermediate bike, whereas this one, I can actually see it being used as an entry-level bike. Interestingly, I have stalled this motorcycle more than any other motorcycle I've ever ridden. I don't know if it's the the lack of grunt in the in the motor or if it's the throttle by wire or something to do with the clutch engagement. I don't know what it is, but I stall this thing all the time and it's really frustrating. Despite me not loving this engine, I will concede that 
it's better for beginners than the Honda in the way that being in the right gear is not quite as important since you are dealing with more horsepower if you need to get yourself out of a situation or pass a car or just get up to speed and maybe you, you don't maybe you're in too high of a gear or too low of a gear you got a little bit more rev range to work with in terms of power band the honda if you need power you better have yourself in that power band back to the seating position though you're much more hunched over and sporty feeling on this bike and maybe there's a little bit of adjustment that could happen with the handlebars to help that but i'm not even necessarily saying it's a bad thing it's just the Honda is a remarkably comfortable upright seating position and what it's made for is that I can ride it for an entire day and not feel sore. My back doesn't get sore, my butt doesn't get sore. It's a very comfortable natural seating position. Uh, the BMW definitely isn't bad but it, it feels a little bit more engaged and a little bit... God damn! <laughs> there we go, it's already twice this ride. It's more of a sporty seating position and uh, it, it does make it more fun to kind of ride the bike in, in aggressive sort of riding situations but when you're just talking commuting or putting on miles, the Honda is a more natural seating position. In today's ride we've got a mixture of kind of 50 mile an hour roads, a little bit of uh, neighborhood slower speed and then some off-road and some highway. So we're really going to get all of the different riding environments here with both bikes. If you're trying to accelerate quickly on the 310 GS, you notice a weird quirk with the throttle by wire in that you, let's see if I can enunciate it. You shift and then you get back on the power and there's a slight delay before the power actually kicks in. Well, you'll see what I mean here when I accelerate away from this light. I'm, I'm twisting the throttle all the way open and there's about a quarter second delay before the bike's actually giving me full fueling. And it, it makes for a very disconnected feel. I haven't ridden a ton of throttle by wire bikes, but I'm pretty sure that's not how a more premium bike's gonna feel. Now if you're shifting slower and you're letting the clutch out a little bit more gradually and rolling back onto the accelerator a little more lazily, you'll never notice it. But if you ride it hard, you really miss that physical connection of a cable. Maybe I'd mind the engine a little less with some sort of aftermarket exhaust that kind of helped wake this up, but I just don't think this engine is ever going to sound good. And that's not to say that the Honda sounds really good either. It just, the engine itself feels more happy to be doing what it's doing and, and it it feels like it fits the character of the bike more. This little buzzy engine doesn't fit the uh, mature appearance of the motorcycle itself. The Honda just looks like a big dirt bike, so everyone's like, oh, no, I mean, of course it's just gonna have some engine that doesn't, <laughs> that just kind of lopes around and, and motivates the thing. Both bikes have gear indicators and tachometers and fuel readouts on the gauge, as well as a clock. And they both kind of use a, a basic LCD display, so neither one's got any real advantage in the tech suite. Now, I haven't had a chance to run a fuel economy test on this bike yet, but we ran the Honda and got 75 mpg. That being said, uh, kind of mixed riding as I've been riding the Honda. I've been getting uh, high 60s, whereas the BMW have been mixed riding at, at high 50s. We'll try to get this out before I actually post this video and I'll put the fuel economy test number down below, but uh, it's probably going to be about 10 miles per gallon below the Honda. And that kind of makes sense. I mean, you're dealing with an extra 50 pounds of weight and uh, different gearing and maybe a little bit different arrow. You also feel it when you're just sitting there revving up the engine, like at that light back there. The, 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 Ride by wire doesn't have the same responsiveness. You're not getting that kind of um, mechanical feel that you do with the throttle cable. And I don't really understand what the point of having ride by wire on this bike is because you don't have cruise control and you don't have ride mode. So, I, I mean, it must have just been a cost thing. They were able to keep costs down by just doing it via ones and zeros. But 
takes away from the character of a fairly characterless bike to begin with. This being a 19 inch front wheel compared to the 21 inch front wheel on the Honda, the bike is happier to turn. You don't have to put quite as much effort into it. That being said, the Honda feels more extension of body where you can kind of just uh, lean your whole body and the whole thing sort of just rolls with you. This, if you try to do that, the, the steering and the handlebars kind of turn on their own and you sort of have to correct for them. Stoplight signal test, if we get right up here, or is it going to signal for us? I don't know if this one has the magnetic uh, circles underneath. Oh, did you guys see that? How did that just stall? They, my clutch hand was in the entire time. What? It's like I freaked the bike out by trying to rev it. Oh, very strange. Neither bike has suspension that's particularly adjustable, so you're kind of stuck with what you get. Both have some preload adjustments, but neither are very easy to do. Pretty much set it for your weight when you're at the dealer and then forget it. It is more satisfying to get this engine up into the high rev range, I will say that. The Honda, there's not really any sort of uh, extra that you're getting above 8,000, 8,500 or so. This does feel like it's coming online more and more as you rev it up. It's almost like the chassis is tuned for more than the engine so you, you just don't really feel like you're getting to use the bike much because the the engine is just kind of what's holding you back it is nice to kind of get up on on the front wheel and that low windshield does make you feel like you can <laughs> really turn it over and get up on front of it do a little ABS slow down and then a zero to 60. Uh, it is easy, aside from the fact that I've been stalling it all the time. Uh, it's a very easy bike to ride, the, the lowness, the way all the controls are laid out. It's why I think this is the better beginner bike between the two of them. If you're getting your first motorcycle or your second motorcycle, if you've been riding for less than a year or two, the, the 310 GS is going to be a better choice for you. And what really solidified that for me was the first time I took it off-road here down this kind of dirt road section. And I don't know how far down we'll get, but it gets pretty gnarly down this way. And I expected this bike to feel much more out of sorts in this sort of riding, especially with uh, the more street-friendly tires and less ground clearance and suspension travel. But it was actually easier to ride off-road than the Honda. And it, a big part of that is how it carries its weight. Now, yes, if you dump this thing over, it's going to cost more to repair and it's going to be harder to pick up. But, but it actually might not be harder to pick up because of where you're having to lift that weight up to because it's so much lower the the lever angle at which you're having to kind of hoist this weight up more uh, approachable the suspension is firmer on these bumps than the honda but not jarringly and i would argue that it actually provides a little bit more uh damping down near the bottom of the shock and actually prevents you from bottoming out as easily Ooh, all right Now you don't have the tractory low first gear that you get on the Honda. That definitely helps for real serious off-roading. And obviously you have ABS and I'll have to post here whether you can turn ABS off. But let's try getting up the steep section with the 310. Oh, okay, so there's a stall. Try that again at uh, at a crawl here. 
All right, so it's doable. You just have to feather the clutch a lot more. And if you're below oh, eight, seven or eight miles per hour, you better be feathering the clutch. That's not the case with the Honda. You can essentially set that or let that clutch out at a walk and it'll engage. So that's, but I think that's more of an intermediate sort of riding uh, characteristic and style. I don't see entry level riders getting themselves into situations like that very often. And if so, you're, I mean, you're probably better just starting out on a straight up dirt bike and learning that way. But if you're getting yourself a motorcycle that you just want to be able to take down roads like this occasionally and, and just have it not get damaged and you know, maybe you want to go on a camping trip or uh, you want to explore some friendly local dirt roads without getting on anything super crazy and intense. That's where I think the G does a lot better job than the CRF. Some pretty sandy sections here. These tigers are really doing a better job than I expected. Some washboarding. Again, you just feel more in control on this bike. You you feel like you can maneuver it and handle it better. I mean, maybe if you're six foot four or six foot five, the Honda might feel fine to you, but that's a large bike for a beginner to feel comfortable on. <laughs> BMW does have cast wheels instead of the spokes that are on the Honda. So uh, theoretically, if you were going to do any really hard off-roading anyway, you might be at risk of bending a wheel, which I don't actually hear of happening all that often, but something that people usually like to at least point out. A lot of times when you're more of a beginner and you're doing off-roading like this, you like to put your feet down. And again, much easier to do that here on the BMW than the Honda. Do a little acceleration test on the dirt. It is a little bit tougher to stand on the BMW, just those handlebars being so low. You can kind of do it for little bits, but you're kind of hunched over, whereas on the Honda, you're standing more upright. Coming up here onto the highway, one of the biggest things that surprised me with the, the G here is that this smaller windshield is actually quieter than the larger windshield on the Honda. For those of you who don't know, especially if you're kind of newer into riding, sometimes when the wind is, is coming off uh, turbulently and hitting you directly in the helmet, it's more loud than just getting clean, uninterrupted air. And that's what I'm having in this bike. The air is hitting me probably mid to high chest being five foot ten and it creates a, a nice smooth riding experience now yes i'm getting a little bit more airflow on me but it, it's quieter on my helmet and the honda's got a taller windshield that we'll see here in a little bit and that creates a very turbulent loud air on my helmet and i pretty much have to wear earplugs when i'm riding that bike around for any sorts of high speed riding the honda does have hand guards built in on the rally package and that does keep my hands warmer admittedly no sort of heated grips on any of these bikes so unless you're adding them uh, you better have some warmer gloves for the bmw i'm gonna get onto the highway here in third gear in both bikes all right cruising at 70 indicated on the BMW, we're at just about 7,000 RPM. And you do really feel that wind, but like I said, it's a fairly quiet wind. So I hit this asphalt, I'm gonna full throttle, 70. We're gonna see what speed we can get up to before we hit the next asphalt. Seventy-seven. All right, so we're still accelerating, even though I'm going up this hill. There's eighty, doing just under eight thousand RPM. So 
decently livable. A lot of air. Like I said, you're feeling on your hands, you're feeling it on your body a little bit, definitely your head, having to lean into the wind a little bit more. But the engine actually doesn't really mind being up here at these revs. And the vibration's not too bad either. I can actually see out my mirrors pretty well. There we go. I got it to do it again, twice now. This thing stalls just from uh, sitting at a light and revving it just right. Let's see if I can do it again. Admittedly, you do feel cooler on the BMW as well. There's the there's the badge envy, obviously, because your normal car driving folk is just going to think, oh, Honda's whatever, boring, Honda, Ford, Civic, CRP, whatever. But BMW, it's a little classier, you know, it's kind of cool. They're not going to know that your bikes essentially cost the same amount that the Honda is, in a lot of ways, more bike, <laughs> more impressive. But this, this bike looks cooler, it's got the cool paint, I mean, it's got a little bit more of a sporty look as you, as you sit on it. It is, it is a bit of a cooler bike than the Honda, I think. Also, I'm being reminded that the passenger seat accommodations right here, much more comfortable sitting right back on the BMW than, uh, than on the Honda. Alyssa went out with me on the Honda and it, I mean, it worked, it's got pegs, it's got a seat, but she didn't really have anywhere to grab onto and she, uh, she didn't love it. <laughs> Despite some of my frustrations with it, the G310S does make a lot of sense for someone new into the sport. It, it covers the basics of riding very well and really doesn't cost that much compared to a lot of the competition, but yet lets you do all of the things that motorcycling has to offer. But let's go jump on the Honda and talk about what it does better and what it does worse. Something a lot of more professional reviews are going to leave out is the fact that having a lower bike like the BMW is going to make it easier to maneuver it around your garage. The Honda with its big uh, tall height and marshmallow suspension does make it a little bit more cumbersome, especially if you're a smaller individual. And hopping on board, uh, same sort of thing. <laughs> Ah, but yes, the, the hard plank seat, but comfortable ergonomics of the Honda. You hear how much more confidently that started up, and there's a, something to do with the cadence of the engine as it's thumping along. Just, it's a little more musical to me. You'll have to accept my apology. I may repeat things throughout this video. This is the third... Uh, video I've shot today and it's I might forget what I've said in the actual full review of this Honda and, and what I said earlier in the comparison video but I'm often finding myself starting this bike off in second gear so here's a perfect example situation just let the clutch out and and second is perfectly fine because if I start in first it's such a tall gear that I find myself having to shift so quickly So right there, that's something that might actually make a little bit more sense for a beginner with the BMW, is that first gear feels more natural and usable on the street, whereas first gear in the Honda kind of feels like it's only there for crawling up hills. There's a certain simplicity, but a robust simplicity on the Honda compared to the BMW. The controls are more basic, but yet feel nicer, if that makes any sense. Yeah, you really don't get any sort of crescendo of power on this bike the way you do with the BMW. Mm. <laughs> oh, but being able to blip that cable actuated throttle just feels so much more natural. Getting up at 55 here, I'm much more blocked by the elements because of that larger windshield and these handguards, but like I said, I'm, I'm getting more of a turbulent noise against my helmet. Especially right right about coming up to 60, it gets really loud. The, the seating position, oh my gosh, my back is thinking me just being so nice and upright here. My arms are extended, my legs are nicely bent. Primo seating position. Lane filtering is pretty comparable on both bikes. They're just about both as wide. Again, you're kind of benefiting on the BMW from it being easier to waddle with, easier to touch the ground and, and kind of maneuver back and forth. The, 
the Honda feels because it's taller and you have less leverage with your legs if it kind of starts tipping one way then you kind of give it a lot of effort to straighten it back up <laughs> uh, just because they're knobbier tires doesn't mean you can't roll this thing over and uh, get down close to pegs oh it's <laughs> It just feels feels a little bit more fun and goofy doing it. Do you hear a little bit of that tire whir, a little road noise with these knobbier tires from the factory? Is that a VFR in front of us? I think it is. It sounds like it. There's a sensation where you sort of just fall into the turn with the CRF. It's not so much a turning of the handlebars, it's almost more of a, uh, it's just a whole body lean. <laughs> uh, rigging the CRF out, it just, it feels like it's just work for it. Not, not that it's unhappy to do it, it just, it, it, it's almost like, what's the point? You're going about the same speeds as the BMW, but it just doesn't feel as excited to be going those speeds. Having that grunted low down power does help with the more casual nature of the bike, though. You're not really being coaxed on to ring it out. You're kind of more like, all right, I'll just have uh, the meat and potatoes of my power kind of mid-range and do the best with it. You don't hear the engine as much, though. I've got this thing tacked out at about six seven grand right now running it through these corners and I'm feeling it through my seat and through the handlebars it's definitely fuzzy but I'm not hearing it scream the way that the BMW engine does and I don't mean scream in a good way no ABS on this model so I'm not gonna panic stop it up here but I will come to a pretty quick stop and we'll do a 0 to 60 on this one threshold braking if you will <laughs> a little bit more grunt with this one. Extra gear needed to get up into in the four or uh, up to sixty. So it's not going to be a surprise to anyone that the CRF is a better bike for off-road. I mean, it's it's clearly a dirt bike with street things on it whereas the BMW is more of a street bike with dirt things on it. But what's important to point out is that the BMW is easier to ride off-road. There's a difference there. There's a difference between better and easier. A finely tuned instrument is not going to make beautiful music without a skilled player playing it. And just in that same way, someone who is not familiar with motorcycling and is not very uh, good at it is not going to be able to take full advantage of a bike that can be competent and very capable off-road. Let's go up the same steep section here. Look at this, I can, I can pretty much let out the clutch. One mile per hour. <laughs> Sorry, I was looking at the gear indicator. What, what are we at here? Yeah, very low. And I can come almost to a stop, two, three miles per hour before this uh, gives up. And of course the tires being grippier, I can actually grab in and stop on inclines and the like. When you do need to put your feet down, it's a much further uh, further distance to get them down there than on the BMW. Suspension again, very marshmallowy, very soft, and it will bottom out even if you got your preload set to your proper weight. It's not very hard to get this CRF to bottom out on you. But standing, pretty easy to do on this bike. You've got rubberized pegs, rubber pegs, but with some teeth that'll grab the outside, your boot there. And you still have to kind of be crunched down a little bit, but actually I'm full extension on leg and arm right now and still holding on to the bike. So more comfortable to stand up on and that kind of helps the suspension 
because you can sort of use your legs as part of the part of the suspension there. Oh, right there! <laughs> I just bottomed it out. That's uh, that's rough. Mm, but in general, it soaks up the bumps much better than the Beamer, and obviously you don't have to worry so much about damaging a rim because they are spoke wheels. Blast this off. We're just going to start in second gear. I don't think we need first. And if and when you do drop one of these things, which is likely to do if you're either off roading or a newer rider, a Honda's going to be cheaper to replace stuff and it's a little bit less likely to break in the first place and then just based on how things fall I actually did dump the spike down once low speed off-road and nothing seems broken a few scuffs here and there you don't even really notice the washboarding on this bike it soaks it all up here we go third gear again although it's pretty gonna be pretty tall on this bike Seventy indicated. We're just over seven thousand RPM. Oh, I don't even think this is going to accelerate once we hit the asphalt here. Six gear and full throttle. One seventy. <laughs> We're losing speed, aren't we? If we see sixty-nine, then it's definitely a loss. Right, let's try down shifting. If we get into fifth, then we're barely accelerating coming up the hill here. Like I said earlier, you really have to be in the right gear and you really do. Uh, you can kind of just barely top out at highway speeds on the Honda. I'm getting a lot I'm getting less wind itself on my body, but it's louder because of that windshield, like I said. And the uh, engine little bit more vibration but not dramatic. Slide back onto the passenger seat which is not really any different from just the main seat here and it's it's not not much accommodation you're kind of just squeezing yourself it's more of like th think of a sports car with a two plus two layout where like yes there are back seats but they're virtually useless outside of maybe a quick five ten minute cramped ride. So two very uh, different approaches to two similar sorts of riding. And I think two different sorts of buyers that would be best suited for each. So let's wrap it up. The CRF 300L is the better bike. It's more refined, it's more capable, but it's not the right answer for everybody. I don't think this is the beginner bike answer, especially not the rally version. Maybe the basic one, but then you're only dealing with just over two gallons of fuel and uh, no wind protection. It's, it's just, it's a little bit more of a niche bike. I don't think slapping the beginner bike label all over it is the best move. It's a strange mixture of a blank canvas that you can change the suspension on, you can add accessories, you can do a lot with it. And also still very capable right out of the factory. It's going to be very reliable. It's easy to own and to use, but not the most approachable bike as a beginner rider. And it's between its height and its tires and its riding characteristics. It's, it's, uh, it's nice. I like it. I actually prefer it over the BMW. But if you're just uh, getting used to riding, I think the BMW is going to be a better choice for you. It's lower. It's more approachable. It's cooler, 
and it's going to allow you to become the rider that you want to be. You can dabble in off-road riding and, and have it be easier and arguably safer to do so. You can dabble in riding aggressively. You can throw a passenger on the back more easily. And I would also give you a little bit more of a, of a taste of that high speed sort of experience. So if you're a newer rider, surprisingly, I would say go with the BMW. But if you're more of an intermediate, if you're more of somebody who knows what you're doing, the CRF is a better choice. It's, it feels better put together. It's more uh, positive to ride. It's more capable and it's my preference. But thank you all so much for watching coming along for the ride. Is there anything else you want to know on the two bikes? Let me know. I'll try to answer them in the, in the comments. We've got fuel economy test and full review on the CRF and probably have both of those coming here shortly on the GS as well. And we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor and as always, ride on. Mm -hmm.